You're not going to leave me, are you, Ash? Are you? I don't want to die. You're not going to leave me here, are you? Are you, Ash? <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most terrifying movie demons. For this list, we'll be looking at the scariest movie demons with either a spiritual or physical connection to hellish imagery. Since we'll be discussing their wicked deeds, expect some spoilers. Have you seen any of these demons in your nightmares? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Valak, The Conjuring Universe What started as a simple haunted house story has now ballooned into a fictional universe involving haunted dolls and demon nuns. Who's that? First appearing in The Conjuring 2, Valak is a terrifying demon who mostly takes the appearance of a creepy nun. Valak's physicality is truly disturbing. Not only is its face a ghostly white, but its eyes are yellow and its mouth a black abyss. Props to the makeup department for this one. It also confronts its enemies in many different ways. It silently stalks Lorraine in one scene, and in another, it's screaming with a banshee yell and sending crucifixes off the wall. Either way, it's clearly very dangerous. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I condemn you back to <laughs> Number 19. Abilam, The Last Exorcism Unlike some of the other movies on this list, The Last Exorcism stars a quote-unquote real demon, at least one that appears in real-life texts. That demon is Abilam, a king who serves under Paimon. The thing about Abilam is that he preys on the flesh of the innocent. He defiles the flesh of the innocent. That is what he does. The movie follows Cotton Marcus, a disillusioned reverend who attempts to publicly condemn exorcisms. But he starts to believe once again when he meets Abilam, a demon who's possessed a farmer's daughter. Abilam has no care for its vessel, even going so far as to joyously break her fingers. In the end, Abilam births something even more inhumane, which promises to cause even greater destruction. This is a possession movie that's easy to take seriously thanks to the villainous pull of its antagonist. Who are you? Number 18. Violator – Spawn For most of the 1997 live-action Spawn adaptation, Violator takes the form of a clown. Very plump and blue-faced, the clown is a terrorizing menace played with glee by John Leguizamo. He's everything a creepy clown should be – manipulative, violent, and rather annoying. Funny, funny, he's our man if he can't kill him, no and while the material isn't the greatest, Leguizamo does what he can. Violator's plan is to kickstart the apocalypse through Jason Wynn. At one point, he reverts to his true form, a huge demon that looks like a cross between a gremlin and a Ghostbusters terror dog. Violator is certainly a memorable villain, even though the movie surrounding him was, shall we say, a little disappointing. Name of the people and things of hell I dubbed thee. Spawn! Number 17. The Lord of Darkness – Legend It's the traditional simplicity that makes the Lord of Darkness so effective. His name is admittedly quite derivative, and he has the appearance of your typical demonic figure – red skin, a flowing black cape, and massive horns. His motivation, which is to cover the world in darkness, is also quite vague and hackneyed. I require the solace of the shadows and the dark of the night. But this is a perfect stylization for a traditional dark fantasy film. It's very in keeping with the movie's tone, which is that of a mythological story containing universal themes of good versus evil. By being the universal personification of evil and demonic, the Lord of Darkness inhabits the movie's ethos to perfection and allows it to work. Plus, he just looks badass. What is light without Dark. What are you without me? Number 16. Azazel. Fallen. 
The main antagonist of Fallen, the demon Azazel, certainly gives Denzel Washington a run for his money. This is a bizarre movie, a delirious mix between gritty police drama, a la Seven, and supernatural possession movie. Azazel is a non-material demon, which certainly gives him an edge in the originality department. I'll get so close to you, so close it breaks you. And if that doesn't work, we'll have other ways. His sole goal in life is to possess people and use their corporeal bodies to commit vicious killings and, in turn, frame the killings on his host. Perhaps even scarier, Azazel acts like a psychopath and has the ability to play nice, pretending to be a polite member of society to slip by unnoticed. It's a rich idea for a movie demon, and Azazel has personality to spare. It's me you want, isn't it? Why'd you just kill me, huh? But I'm still having fun. Aren't you still having fun? Number 15. Payman. Hereditary. This horror drama goes to some weird places. It begins as a relatively mundane grief story, with Annie Graham coming to terms with various deaths. But it eventually devolves into a supernatural drama concerning a secret coven and a devotion to the demon Payman. You are Payman, one of the eight kings of hell. Payman is a real demon, appearing in the famous grimoire, The Lesser Key of Solomon. Viewers never actually see Payman in the flesh, but the lengths that the coven goes to worship him, combined with the nightmarish events of the movie, are more than enough to make him an ominous presence. Very rarely has an unseen force been so terrifying. Do you remember Joan? My friend, her grandson died due to be in her apartment. It did look like your mother. Well, listen, she taught me how to do the seance. I didn't even want to, but she brought her grandson back, and I saw it and felt it just like you did with Charlie. Number 14. Hospital Demons. Jacob's Ladder. This psychological horror film starring Tim Robbins is a creepy meditation on death and the afterlife. Spoilers, Jacob is dying in Vietnam and experiencing some sort of passage between life and death. He said the only thing that burns in hell is the part of you that won't let go of your life. Your memories, your attachments. To help him along his way, Jacob is taken to a decrepit and disgusting hospital inhabited by various demons. These demons are both physically disturbing and horrifically honest, correctly telling Jacob that he has died. It seems like a sort of drug-induced nightmare, but it turns out to be a real process enacted by the demons to help Jacob accept his death. Jacob literally saw hell, and suffice to say, it's not a pretty place. There is no out of here. You've been killed, don't you remember? Number 13. The Demons. The Beyond. Directed by Italian schlock master Lucio Fulci, The Beyond has long been regarded for its surreal qualities and nonsensical plot. It's all part of Fulci's charm. In the very loosest of terms, The Beyond is about a portal to hell. The seven dreaded gateways are concealed in seven cursed places. Woe be unto him who ventures near without knowledge. A portal is opened in New Orleans appropriately named Seven Doors Hotel, prompting deadly events to occur when a woman reopens the hotel. The demonic forces take various forms throughout the film, including zombies and people-eating tarantulas. The hellish forces go on to wreak disgusting destruction, proving why Fulci is considered the godfather of gore. What the hell's going on around here? I don't know. I think I'm going crazy. Number 12. Abizu. The Possession. This supernatural horror film is loosely based on the legend of the Dybbuk Box. For those unaware, this is a wine cabinet said to be haunted by a malicious spirit. The story was actually made up by a guy on eBay to help sell his refurbished item, but whatever. Well, I think that means that whoever made this didn't want anybody to open it, or at least they didn't want anybody to open it easily. In the possession, a young girl is possessed by the demon Abizu after her father buys the Dybbuk Box at a garage sale. The typical events follow, like the girl acting in an inhuman manner and a climactic battle between good and evil. The movie takes many cues from The Exorcist, but Abizu is a creepy antagonist in its own right. Who are you? What do you want with my little girl? You tell me! Number 11. Toby. The Paranormal Activity Franchise. While it has the name of an adorable pet dog, Toby is actually quite a malicious figure. 
The main antagonist of the Paranormal Activity franchise, Toby is responsible for the series' hauntings. It's directly killed several people and caused stress for countless more through its nightmarish hauntings. I think there's a, there's a pattern to these. Some of these look familiar. Like, I know I've seen this stuff before. Its true form is completely unknown, and this makes it even scarier. The imagined is often far scarier than the reality. Toby wants nothing more than to obtain a human body, and it isn't afraid of haunting and killing to get it. While the franchise gets a little bogged down in its own mythology, the ghostly scares have always been the primary selling point. And thanks to Toby, those scares are often fantastic. If you saw me talking to somebody, it'll be Toby. <laughs> Toby's your friend? Yes. Number 10. The Beast Poltergeist a classic haunted house movie, Poltergeist concerns the trials and tribulations of the Freeling family. The Freelings are accosted by a demonic entity which emerges from their television. The Poltergeist causes some creepy and malicious events before sucking Carol Ann through a portal. Within the other dimension, she's imprisoned by a demonic entity known only as the Beast. To her, it simply is another child. To us. He is the beast. The beast goes largely unseen, although its dimension is filled with ectoplasm and it briefly takes on the appearance of a thin, stringy ghost with a skeletal face. It's a wonderful bit of practical effects magic, and the ominous presence of the beast helped make Poltergeist a national phenomenon. A terrible presence is in there with her. So much rage, so much betrayal. I've never sensed anything like it. Number 9. Annabelle's Demon – The Conjuring Universe Dolls are just inherently unsettling. Combine that with demonic possession and you have one scary franchise. The Conjuring and Annabelle expanded on the haunted doll mythos by drawing from the supposed true story of Annabelle, a doll that the famous ghost-hunting duo The Warrens came across. At the very least, I've heard of a married couple that the church has worked with in the past to deal with this type of thing. They're back east, but a call can always be placed. The previous owners brought the doll to them after they observed it moving on its own. Because of its malicious tendencies, the Warrens concluded that this was the work of a demon and not a little girl's spirit as originally presumed. And so the story was immortalized in film, making Annabelle a doll household name. Camilla got in touch with a medium. We learned from her that the doll was possessed by a girl named Annabelle Higgins. She had lost her parents and had taken a liking to my doll. Number 8. Krampus. Krampus. The Krampus is Santa's antithesis. Instead of supplying presents and goodwill to children at Christmas, the Krampus tortures them and kidnaps their loved ones. Sounds fun. This terrifying concept, most likely deriving from Germanic pagan folklore, sets the basis for the 2015 film Krampus. Though the big screen story has a slightly comedic tone, Evil Santa, Jesus H. Almighty. She'll be yammering about a rabbit Easter bunny come spring. Although some may refer to the creature as a boogeyman, the Krampus is also described as a large, horned, half-goat, half-demon figure that drags those without Christmas spirit to its netherworld. Most adult viewers were too jaded to be afraid of Krampus, but children who hold Christmas sacred were shell-shocked by the film. And as he had for thousands of years, Krampus came not to reward, but to punish. Number 7. Cenobites – The Hellraiser Franchise Originating in a Clive Barker novella, the Cenobites made their film debut in Hellraiser in 1987. They are descendants from a hell-like place in which torture is tantamount to breathing. Each Cenobite is terrifying in appearance and distinctly disfigured, as their leader Pinhead was not named facetiously. It's an unassuming gold or brass-trimmed box that lets them reach Earth, which never bodes well for whoever opens it. The Cenobites then take them to what we humans would perceive as another world to partake in an eternity of transcendental suffering. Of note, Pinhead and his fellow Cenobites were not initially confirmed to be demons, but they were progressively presented as such as the Hellraiser series went on. No more deals, Kirsty. It is your flesh we want to experience, not your skill at bargaining. Number 6. Bagul – The Sinister Franchise Bagul is a newer addition to the demon Rolodex, but its appearance and occupation has bolstered its reputation. It's a frightening, soul-stealing demon that attaches itself to movie footage shot by the children it possesses. A deity? What kind of deity? Uh, a, a very obscure one, dating back to Babylonian times. 
named Bagul, the eater of children. <laughs> Did you say eater? These films capture the children killing their own families as dictated by the one they call Mr. Boogie. This is a cycle that repeats from family to family and from house to house after each one discovers the ever-expanding reels of film. When each killing is complete, the pagan Babylonian deity takes the children to its realm for unending servitude. Sinister is right. Number 5. Balrog the Lord of the Rings franchise. Balrogs are the demons of J.R.R. Tolkien's mythological world. They're subservient to the prime dark lord known as Morgoth and reside in the depths of Middle-earth. A Balrog, a demon of the ancient world. This foe is beyond any of Though referenced in most of the books, it's in the film version of The Fellowship of the Ring where the main characters encounter one of these creatures. The Balrog appears as a giant, fiery, whip-wielding monster, and its battle against Gandalf is, to use a cliched word, epic. The Two Towers shows us the result of this battle, and its accompanying twist is the best in the trilogy. Until at last I threw down my enemy and smote his ruin upon the mountainside. Number 4. Lamia, drag me to hell. Romani curses are low on the list of things we wish to happen to us, and drag me to hell elucidates that sentiment. After a bank employee refuses a request for an extension on a mortgage payment from a Romani woman, she becomes the victim of a curse that summons Lamia, one of the most vengeful and persistent demons in film history. Soon it will be you who comes begging to me. As is custom, the Lamia subjects her to severe psychological torture, despite all attempts to undo the curse. After three days, the demon does as the title prophesizes, and we don't want to imagine what happens after that. <laughs> Number 3. Deadites the Evil Dead franchise. The Deadites are life forces like humans that have been possessed by the Kandarian demon and serve as the main antagonist throughout the Evil Dead films. Eight of spades, two spades, jack of diamonds, jack of clubs. The demon is initially summoned from the Sumerian version of the Book of the Dead found in the remote cabin. After being unleashed, it takes over humans' bodies by rendering them evil and zombie-like and it affects all of the main characters at some point in time. There are few limits to what the demon can control, and these parameters are tested by Ash through multiple movies. The chaos that the Kandarian demon causes is truly unparalleled. Groovy. Number 2. Lipstick Face Demon The Insidious Franchise for this generation of horror moviegoers, the lipstick face demon is etched in their consciousness. Few characters have made such a startling first appearance, and this is due to the suddenness of its pop-up and the brightness of its makeup. I can still hear that voice. We learn later that this demon is from a ghostly world called The Further, and it has a propensity for abducting children's bodies. This leads us to the penultimate scene in the demon's lair. Unfortunately, there was no replicating the impact of its introduction, as many people felt its climactic appearance, in which it's found sharpening its claws lacking. That may be why it hardly appears in the sequels. And then there is this. A demon who seeks Dalton's body for one reason, to cause pain to others. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Pazuzu – The Exorcist Franchise During the mid-70s, no movie scared people more than The Exorcist, and Captain Howdy was responsible. No, I do. Captain Howdy said no. Captain who? Captain Howdy. Who's Captain Howdy? 
You know, I make the questions and he does the answers. Viewers couldn't handle the demonic possession and manipulation of a 12-year-old girl, as theater patrons reportedly fainted, puked, and walked out in significant numbers. This demon, first proclaiming to be the devil himself, is eventually outed as Pazuzu, though it's not named in the original movie. Pazuzu terrorized characters and moviegoers for decades, especially those of the Christian persuasion, some of whom believe the movies themselves to be cursed and that watching them could cause them to be possessed. It's astounding that a fictional character could make such a real impact on society, and that's why Pazuzu is number one. How long are you planning to stay in Reagan? Until she rots and lies stinking in the earth. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.